Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing fantastic out there tonight and certainly had yourselves a great day. And I hope you all had a great weekend as it comes to an end. Going to head off into another work week. Hopefully for most of you folks, it is a short work week with Thanksgiving. A lot of people obviously have Thanksgiving off work and even the Friday after, maybe the Wednesday before. Maybe you took off the entire week and you may be traveling somewhere. Well, I got you an update on what could happen weather-wise throughout the entire work week coming up and just your Thanksgiving week. But we're really going to focus in on tomorrow for your Monday. It's going to be quite active, guys. It's going to be our biggest severe weather threat since August, I would say. And we are, I would say, right in the meat of secondary severe weather season. It's been pretty quiet so far. It really has. We have not even had really a slight risk. So tomorrow is going to be a big deal. It has the potential. It has a low end potential to hit that category of outbreak. But of course, everybody's criteria of an outbreak of severe weather is a little bit different. You know, I, I like to hold back from using that term unless I'm pretty confident it's going to happen. So we don't know quite yet, but we do have an enhanced risk now. So we're going to talk in great detail on that, zoom into this region, speak on this and keep you guys well aware and well ahead of what potentially can unfold tomorrow for tomorrow. And then we are going to speak on what comes up after that. Like this same system is going to produce a lot of strong winds, the potential for a lot of rain, even some ice up into like West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and then maybe some interior northeast snow. And then we'll take a peek on what's to come a little bit further on down the road. So this will be a pretty long video, but we're going to get you guys some really good information here. So if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. I've not had a chance to answer any comments since Friday, and I really apologize for that. I know there's probably some prayer requests in there. I promise you guys I will get called up tomorrow, probably tomorrow morning, and I will get everything answered, especially your questions. I'm sure they're regarding severe weather across your area of the South. And, uh, you know, speaking of the prayers, if you folks got anything that I can pray about or anybody else can pray over, please leave those in the comments below. With that being said, let's get rocking and rolling. So as you can see right on your screen, this is the Storm Prediction Center website. We have an enhanced risk. We spoke about it in this morning's video when we only had the slight risk up. You know, they mentioned the possibility at the bottom of the discussion from the Storm Prediction Center that this could upgrade to an enhanced risk, which is a level three out of five. You see the orange right here. Slight risk is a level two out of five. That's in the yellow, dark green, level one out of five. So we have an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow. Once you start to get into that enhanced risk, it, this really becomes a big deal as far as severe weather. So this is a broad look at it. Let's go on and get a little bit closer on what this looks like and really break down what the main risks are for tomorrow. So this is the latest information as of, you know, about 530 Eastern time. Enhanced risk right in here. This includes places like I would say it's just south of Shreveport, but, you know, it does include Monroe, Louisiana. Alexandria, uh, maybe a couple of very small towns right here, right inside the border into Texas, if you look right into here. And if you see me looking down, any, you know, that's just me trying to find some towns on Google Maps on my phone. But Vicksburg, Jackson, Mississippi, of course, it seems like these these folks are always in the gun, under the gun with severe weather. Um, and then basically all of southwest Mississippi has a risk of has an enhanced risk of severe weather so other folks outside of that pretty much all of eastern uh, texas has a slight risk all of southern louisiana slight risk this includes baton rouge new orleans gulfport and this all gets all the way into southern arkansas also so you know folks uh el, el dorado uh, cross it. If I'm pronouncing these names wrong, I do apologize. All the way up to about Camden, Arkansas has that slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow. It's level two out of five. So what are the real big risk for tomorrow? Well, this will start off with a bang here, and this is going to be the most significant risk more than likely tomorrow, along with high wind risk to the potential for damaging winds. Not only do you have a 10% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location in this yellow area, okay, basically the same area that has an enhanced risk, you also have a 10% risk of a strong tornado, okay, which is considered from the Storm Prediction Center an EF2 or higher. So you have a 10% risk of a tornado, and you also have that 10% risk of a significant tornado. That don't mean you add 
10 plus 10, which equals 20, okay? It's its own risk, right? So in the brown area, that is a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location. And of course, the green is a 2% risk. If you want to see the legend, there it is down here at the bottom of your screen. So I like to always explain that to the audience, what it means, because not everybody understands. But uh, yeah, not only do you have that risk, 10% risk of a tornado, you also have the 10% risk of a significant tornado. What about hail tomorrow? What kind of risk do we have? Well, just a 15% risk um, of hail reaching one inch in diameter or larger in this yellow area right here. Okay, so this includes some of the slight risk and pretty much all of the enhanced risk. So we do have a risk, especially early in the day, I would say in eastern Texas, okay, with some of these cells that could potentially become discrete. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you have a discrete supercell, those have a bigger chance before clustering up to produce that larger hail. What about winds? I think winds will be a big deal, especially later in this severe weather period. Getting into Mississippi, actually, I would say, you know, you tucked into that eastern, northeastern section of the Louisiana. Uh, you got a in that red area, that is a 30 percent chance of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher, which is 55 to 60 miles per hour, a 30% chance within 25 miles in any given location. That does include Jackson, Vicks, uh, Vicksburg, uh, Mississippi. Um, was that Rayville? Uh, goes pretty much all the way to about Rayville, Louisiana. So yeah, guys, I mean, th this is gonna be a big, a big threat for tomorrow, it is. So that's breaking down uh, the risk and the percentage of the risk from the Storm Prediction Center. Always like to do that. And uh, man, I, we were talking severe weather season so much over the spring and summer, especially the summer, that I could just fly through this so fast. But I'm a little rusty just because we haven't talked about severe weather in so long. But um, please, please be aware of this. And the reason that the biggest wind threat, the threat of damaging winds, is a little bit further east is because this low pressure, which will be flying across, the surface low will be flying across like northwest Mississippi, will be strengthening. As it does, the low-level jet is strengthening also. Level of a jet, low-level jet is basically winds that sit about a mile up in the atmosphere. And these winds will actually mix to the surface, creating very strong winds, even if it's not even storming. But of course, there's going to be a lot of wind energy with these storms. So let's take a broad look, a bigger picture of what happens and if you look over here here's the low pressure entering your screen we're going to start off tomorrow morning okay there's going to be some convection some heavier rain even some rumbles of thunder even some storms tomorrow morning you know potentially you know northwest arkansas eastern sections of oklahoma seeing some storm activity you're already seeing some storms in areas of eastern texas and in fact you know around lunchtime it could get pretty active in eastern texas but what we're going to do is we're going to fly through this very quick. I just want to, I want you guys to see a broader look at the evolution of this storm. We're getting to this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. Here comes that low pressure right here. Those nasty storms moving in. And if you're, and if you're thinking and watching this, Mitch, you're going through this way too fast. Trust me, I'm about to zoom into your individual areas. But this is just a broader look. This is that low pressure scooting over northern Mississippi. Here it goes. Those storms to the south of that L or the danger zone storms. And then this continues to move in and then we're waking up tomorrow morning and look at that freezing rain showing up in the higher elevations of Virginia and West Virginia getting into Pennsylvania. But waking up Tuesday morning, we got storms going across Alabama, storms entering the northern portion of Georgia, maybe even the upstate of South Carolina. OK, but that's a broader look at what what happens tomorrow. We'll kind of zoom through that really quick one more time. Here it is. Storms moving in. Bang, 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 getting all the way to Tuesday morning. And there it is. So let's zoom into this. OK, we're, we're going to include all of Louisiana, obviously, which you see on your screen and then eastern Texas in this. And then we're going to switch to a different frame and it's going to cover Mississippi and Alabama and other areas. OK, and we'll talk a little bit about Mississippi in this frame, too. So, you know, if, if I stall out a little bit, it's because I'm trying to mention a couple town names. You know, I do a little bit different if you're a first time viewer. If you're not, you already know what I'm probably about to say, but I'm a little bit different than other YouTubers. That's why my videos are, are 30 to 40 minutes long. I like to really slow down in this, try to give you a general idea, a time frame where these storms are going to move through your area, not just fly through it and say, hey, there's a risk between, you know, 12 o'clock and six. Um, you know, I'm able to do this. The, the local people on, on the TV only get five or 10 minutes to discuss the weather. I got all the time in the world, you know, whether you guys as the audience spend all that time watching it. Now that's up to you guys. No hard feelings at all, but I'm going to try to do my, 
you know, my thing and try to keep you guys safe. So let's keep this going, starting off tomorrow morning. If you're confused about what time frame we're at, I'm talking so fast, saying so many words a minute that sometimes I just kind of forget to say a time frame. Here it is right up here. This is an Eastern time. So this obviously is in Central time. Okay, so back this up one hour. So technically this is 7, this is 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we got some storm action already beginning to bubble up. This is around 10 a.m. We'll stop it here. Look at these storms in Eastern Texas, right? Um, you got storms in, you know, around the Tyler area, Longview, um, what is that, Marshall, down the center, Lufkin, you got some storms moving in. Will these be severe yet? I mean, it's pretty early in the day, but I do think that there could be some severe, uh, severe warm storms tomorrow morning, okay? And then these start to move into the Shreveport area, right in here. Now, remember, this is where your enhanced risk is right here. So they're thinking that the storms are going to get pretty bad as they get into Louisiana and Mississippi. Okay, so we're going to switch this back and here they are. They're moving in and we'll stop it right here. This is around 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Looks like the worst of it is starting to move out of Texas. Okay, it looks like it's going to be a, a late morning, very early afternoon threat for Texas. Okay, so this starts to move out. I think you'll get some clearing. We have to see how these storms are going to behave tomorrow, late morning, early afternoon. But I think that's your time frame in pretty much all of Texas. Okay. Um, but once you get into Louisiana, this is when they start to get dangerous, in my opinion. Shreveport, I think you're right on that northwest edge of the worst weather. But I definitely think Shreveport, you guys are going to get some nasty storms just after lunchtime tomorrow, give or take an hour. And then on down was that Interstate 49. Uh, these storms could be quite tense and tense riding over this region. So you notice there's a lot more storm action right up here in southern Arkansas, okay, um, kind of the El Dorado region and northern Louisiana. Well, there's not as much storm action down here, okay? That's a good and bad thing. The good news is, is well, there's just not as much storm action. The bad news is whatever storms do get going, they got a lot more breathing room. They're not kind of congealed with other uh, other convection showers and storms. So they can take better advantage of the environment that's in place. Okay, and we're going to talk about the ingredients here too in there in a second. Okay, so you stop it here. This is tomorrow mid-afternoon about 4 p.m. You know, you got to watch this little line of storms right here. This is blasting through um, areas of Monroe and surrounding towns. Um, this is kind of backed up all the way down to like, what is that, Manny, Louisiana, and these continue and and this is the concerning look you see this has this, this like kidney bean look down here in southeast louisiana that's that concerning look you don't like to see lafayette baton rouge you got to watch these storms okay technically you guys are almost in the slight risk enhanced risk a little bit further north but you know um you start to get in all the communities and um in southwest uh, mississippi i think that the weather really goes downhill for you guys probably 4 or 5 p.m jackson mississippi pretty much the same deal okay you guys in jackson mississippi and everybody surrounding this area know all about severe weather okay but the, the, the thing that i worry about is you know we're starting to get to the point where the sun's setting at this point it's around 6 p.m it's pretty much dark out here especially with the cloudiness and this is when we watch out for the infamous nocturnal tornadoes okay and unfortunately our severe weather threat will still be pretty much raging on, okay? And uh, this starts to head into Mississippi, okay? And we're still dealing with the potential for severe weather down here in Southeast Louisiana. So let's go on and switch to this. So a more broader view and uh, shows much more states in this. So like I said, starting off around 5 p.m., the worst weather, you got a lot of heavy rain. Now, you folks up in, in Memphis, okay, Dyersburg, um, on up the road here, uh, Greenville, basically up the Mississippi Delta here. Now, uh, you're, this is immediately associated with a low pressure right in here. So the severe weather threat won't be as high, okay? But you're going to have a lot of strong winds embedded in all this heavy rain and heavy storm activity up here. So Colt Cross in the Mississippi River area, western, uh, western Tennessee, strong winds with this tomorrow. The winds really, really pick up in Mississippi, Alabama, and eventually all of Tennessee, especially Eastern Tennessee. But you keep this going, guys, and you know this is around 7 p.m. You have some the potential for dangerous storms going right through the heart of Mississippi. And these storms right in here, you know that you know just moved through Jackson, basically cruising cruising across uh, 
you know, I-20 he hidden, um, heading towards like Meridian a little bit later in the evening, these will have a lot of wind energy with them and you will still have that lingering tornado threat. Okay, right into here. So this is around 7 p.m., um, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., you know, 8 to, 8 to 10 p.m. The storms are really packing a punch in Meridian. And uh, I mean, all the way down here to Hattiesburg, okay, Gulfport starts to see that storm activity just before I would say midnight tomorrow night. And then I think the storms really start to lose some intensity. They're still, I think, going to be very strong, even in Alabama. Okay, you know, I would say rain begins to move into Alabama as early as dinner time tomorrow, probably before that. Okay, but I would say as the low pressure is flying to your north up here, okay, uh, this is around midnight. Watch out Birmingham, up to Huntsville, Florence, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Um, you know, these the tornado threat is probably going to significantly drop off, but you're still going to be dealing with howling winds overnight, especially in northern Alabama. Okay, so, you know, before you go to bed tomorrow night in, in Alabama, especially the northern half of Alabama, up into the Cumberland Plateau into Tennessee, I'm telling you guys, fasten things down. Don't have anything loose in your yard. If you've already put up Christmas decorations, I mean, I would, I would kind of, I mean, in my opinion, I, I would maybe put them back in for a night or two. Um, but all this just rain up here, a lot of strong winds associated with it. And we're going to talk about that more here in a second. But I mean, you're waking up Tuesday morning, guys, you still got storms ongoing and there is a marginal risk down here, but we're not going to talk much on that right now. But yeah, I, I hope that helps guys. Um, I hope, I hope I mentioned enough towns and cities and communities and, um, you know, just, just ask me a question. If you got, got it, if you got a um, question, just throw it in the comments and I will try to get to them. I'll try to wake up a little extra, extra early tomorrow morning and try to answer them. But, you know, th you know, this, this afternoon, a lot of dry air in place. Okay. But as we're getting into Monday morning, I want to brief you guys on this really quick. If you're new, okay. The ingredients for severe weather, they're broken up in two categories. You got something called thermodynamics and kinematics. And wherever both of these overlap the best, that's where your highest severe weather threat is going to be. So you ask Mitch, what do you mean by thermodynamics? Typically, thermodynamics are higher dew points. Okay, how high are your dew points? And there's, we got some cat motion behind me. That's Kylo, if you just saw something move. Um, we have thermodyn the thermodynamics are higher dew points, higher moisture in the atmosphere, higher temperatures. Okay, what are your temperatures looking like? And then in response to those higher dew points, you have higher Kate values. If you're asking Mitch, what is Kate? Think of that as storm energy, storm fuel in the atmosphere. The higher it is, the more energy in the atmosphere is there for these storms to fuel, all of, fuel off of. Then you got things like lapse rates too. But we're not going to get much into that right now. We really dive deep into that when we have more complex severe weather events. But the next thing you have is kinematics. Basically, what wind profile in the atmosphere do you have? Uh, do you, what kind of wind shear, directional shear do you have? Uh, do you have a lot of wind energy associated with this? And you will with this. So you're going to have an overlapping of both of these ingredients. So let's take a look at dew points first. So as we're moving forward, we're waking up tomorrow morning. You'll notice, say if you're like in Jackson, Mississippi, you'll wake up to dew points probably in the 40s. Okay, it's not that humid. By the time you start to get into, I would say, the afternoon hours, you'll notice it'll feel a lot different in northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, southwest Mississippi in the afternoon compared to when you woke up yesterday morning. I mean, yesterday morning, when you woke up uh, in the morning hours of tomorrow. Okay, got to make sure I'm speaking past, future, where am I speaking? But you get what I'm saying. So the atmosphere will basically, basically change, and that's because you got a low pressure moving to the north, and it's basically pulling up all this moisture out the Gulf of Mexico. So these dew, dew points are in the upper 60s, low 70s down here. So you can check this off the box as an ingredient, a thermodynamic. Go on and check that off. This is a pretty, uh, your classic looking moist sector, se sector right in here. A sector of very moist air that supports severe weather. This is some high humidity. This is like summertime dew points down here, okay? And this continues rides and this this moist sector rides all the way into southern alabama okay and then you get that cool crisp dry air that filters in behind it for tuesday morning so 
Dew points will rise. Humidity will be there and the moisture available in the atmosphere will be there. So in response to those higher dew points, what about your cape levels, your storm fuel? Well, sure enough, guys, here it is. We're getting into Monday afternoon. All right, cape values begin to rise in eastern Texas to 1,000 joules per kilogram. And I know you're thinking, well, that don't seem like a ton, especially if you're viewing and you've watched these videos before. Well, when you mix 1,000 joules per kilogram, um, with, with the moisture in the atmosphere and then the kinematics I'm about to show you, that is plenty enough cape for a severe weather event. And this actually increases, okay? You get cape levels by the time you get into tomorrow, late afternoon, the evening, you know, and, and, and central areas of Louisiana pushing over 1,500 joules per kilogram. Surface lows right in here. There's a little bit of a triple point. You notice how the cape levels go from over 1,000 joules per kilogram to, you know, zero up here up the Mississippi um, River. Um, that is because the low pressure is here. Once you get north of the low pressure, typically you don't have any severe weather. But here it is. You can see basically those higher cape levels are riding with that moist sector. So as long as you got cape levels over 800 to 1,000 joules per kilogram, you got plenty enough juice in the atmosphere that supports a severe weather threat. So, oh, cool. Cat's just chilling beside me, being, being a good boy. Uh, so what about those kinematics, okay? This is winds 850 millibars in the atmosphere. So if you don't know what that means, that's about a mile up in the atmosphere, about four to 6,000 feet up in the air. So this is something we look at when we are really breaking down severe weather. We look at the mid-level jet too, which is going to be way up there. Very, Those are winds like several, several, several thousand feet up in the air that are moving like faster than interstate speed. These are winds about a mile above our heads. Basically, you know, in the spring when they're calling for severe weather and you look up in the sky about lunchtime and it looks like the clouds are moving like 100 miles an hour up in the air. They're moving so fast. It's ridiculous. That is a low level jet overhead. And that'll be kind of what happens tomorrow morning. You know, for example, I keep using Jackson as an, as an example, Vicksburg. You know, you'll wake up and by the time you're walking outside for tomorrow afternoon, You'll probably look up in the sky and you'll notice that the clouds are moving very fast. That's a low level jet moving in in response to a deepening surface low up here. So you go on and get it right in here. This is about tomorrow afternoon ish sometime in central Louisiana. You got a 50 to 60 knot low level jet running through. This means that you basically got winds pushing 55 to 65 miles per hour, about a mile above your head. It's about almost interstate speed. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that you overlap this with those thermodynamics that I just talked about. And that means that, I mean, you basically have kind of a an area. It basically have your enhanced area. And it makes sense because you got your higher dew points right in here. And then you got your higher kinematics right in here also. And that's why the, the enhanced threat starts right in here. And then it goes into areas of Mississippi. And if you keep keep this going, this low level jet strengthens even more. You start getting over, you start get having areas that are pushing over 60 knots based off the HRRR model. And you do get that. I mean, you get, it gets high end up here. We're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. We're going to talk about this wind threat up here in Tennessee in the Southern Appalachian Mountains here in a second. But that is why the wind threat in Mississippi is higher than it is like in Eastern areas of Texas, even I'm sorry. Yeah, eastern areas of Texas and western Louisiana is because the wind, the low level jet really begins to strengthen later in the time period, like over Mississippi. So, like I said, any storms that are ongoing, okay, under this low level jet are going to be dealing with a ton of wind energy to produce a lot of strong winds, even at the surface. Okay, I know I keep mentioning it aloft, but winds will mix to the surface. Okay, so. What about that tornado threat? I think this is the thing that most people are concerned about. This is the updraft velocity swath. Now, you know, basically these more highlighted colors you see in northern Louisiana, uh, western areas of uh, Mississippi, even some areas in southern Arkansas. This indicates where this run of the H triple R miles trying to pinpoint where updrafts are rotating, basically where you have rotation in storms. So this latest long range run of the H triple R model really likes northern Louisiana. OK, um, but that doesn't mean that just because you see a yellow spot over your area, like in Monroe, Louisiana, that doesn't mean that there's a 100 percent chance you're going to see a tornado. It's just this one specific run. OK, and this, you know, gets into Vicksburg, gets into Jackson. So we got to watch out for this. Now, you know, let's look at the rest of the Deep South 
And, uh, you know, this carries a little bit deeper into Mississippi, even got some highlighted areas showing in Alabama. So this is just where this run of the HRRR model is trying to pick up on some rotating updrafts. Just because you have a rotating updraft, that don't mean you have a tornado on the ground. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But this run really likes this area. Okay, so yeah, guys. So um, be careful. We'll do it all again tomorrow morning, get you one last really good update. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's about as detailed as you can get with this. So what we're going to do is talk about the rest of the storm. What happens after tomorrow? Well, this keeps on going. Okay, rain begins to pick up in the southern Appalachian Mountains. And, and guys, I would not be surprised as we're getting into tomorrow night if some of these areas and very high elevations of the mountains of North Carolina sees a little bit of ice, just a little bit. You got to be way up there, though, man. I'm talking about 4,500, 5,000 feet up in the air, most likely. Okay, if you look really hard, you can see some splotches of pink. We're not going to focus too much on that. So um, rain begins to take over in these areas that really, really need to rain. Unfortunately, though, you're going to get some very, very strong winds. And there's the potential, and we'll talk about this here in a second, that these winds pick up before the rain moves in. What does that mean? That means that you have the potential for sometime tomorrow night for some wildfires to get going because it's so dry. So we really need to hope that the winds do not pick up too much in the southern Appalachian Mountains before this rain moves in. But this first big wave of rain, not to leave you guys in Indiana, Illinois hanging out too, you guys are going to get a lot of rain too. There could be a little sneaky cold core set up up here too. I'd watch out western Kentucky, southern sections of Indiana, Illinois. You guys could get some sneaky severe weather too. It's called a core, cold core setup. It's basically severe weather associated with the upper level low. Um, we'll speak on that if it needs to be spoke on tomorrow, um, but won't speak too much on it right now. But this continues. You, you get a lot of wind-driven rain moving over areas of North Georgia. I think you could have some wind damage from this. Not any like tornadoes or anything like this in North Georgia, but I think you're waking up to Tuesday morning. And I think we're going to be dealing with power outages, and I think we're going to be dealing with a lot of strong winds over uh, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina all the way up the spine of the Appalachian Mountains. And we keep this going, guys, and we're going to speak on this ice here in West Virginia and Virginia and then Pennsylvania. But, you know, we keep this going, and then we start to get the widespread rains into areas of the Carolinas, Georgia. And then we're going to probably have another severe weather threat, probably southwest Georgia, southeast areas of Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. I think we will at minimum have a marginal risk. We already do, actually. Um, but we'll talk more on that when we know a little bit more. This could uptrend, but with the placement of the surface low way up here by then, um, I think you're going to be lacking um, the severe weather ingredients down here as this thing really becomes strung out. So as far as how much rain we're going to get just between now and about midday Wednesday, guys, beneficial rains are coming. Much needed rain is coming. We're just going to have to deal with a lot of strong winds. I mean, here it is. Pick where you're at in the map. This is the blend of all models forecast. A lot of much needed rain. Okay. Might get a little bit too much at one time. We'll see. But a few inches of rain is likely in Western North Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina, North Georgia. Um, these areas in Virginia really need to rain two to three inches of rain. A lot of rain is going to fall in these severely drought stricken regions. That's the good news. The bad news is, look at these winds. And we'll stop it here, guys. This is about tomorrow afternoon. Winds are already beginning to gust to 20, 30, 40 miles per hour, especially in these higher peaks in the southern Appalachian Mountains of eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, north Georgia. And unfortunately, if you compare this time frame, like if you look at, look at this, this is around 4 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. And you look at 4 to 5 p.m. Um, where this rain is at, okay, the rain, guys, 4 to 5, 6 p.m. tomorrow is still way over here, okay? But the winds, guys, the winds are already picking up well before the rain even gets close, okay? That's the concerning thing. I mean, you got winds starting to gust, guys, to like tropical storm force conditions here and the higher elevations of uh, southwest, you know, North Carolina and uh, just the... Just the spine of uh, basically the spine of the western slopes of Tennessee, and this is a concern. I mean, you keep this going all the way through. All right, we'll just take it the entire length of the run. All right, these are winds gusting to like 70, 80 miles per hour in the Smoky Mountains. And guys, I mean, you even look at the Cumberland Plateau, 
Okay, this is winds gusting to like 60, 55, 60 miles per hour. Okay, but even in northern Alabama, guys, the H triple R model is saying with this, when this, when this basically this low pressure flies through, this is going to bring that expansive wind field right overhead. But on the surface, you're still going to have those 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts that potentially are there for areas of northern Alabama. I would say central to pretty much all the way through eastern Tennessee, all the way up very windy conditions into Kentucky, Ohio, but very, very strong winds. Okay, that's why you got the high wind watches. They might have been up during, upgraded to high wind warnings. I'm not sure, but they will be regardless. Um, but guys, the higher elevations of Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, even into the higher elevations of extreme western Maryland, the hills and the mountainous regions of Pennsylvania, very, very, very strong winds. Unfortunately, the placement of this low pressure is basically right up the spine of the mountains. So this is going to cause issues. We need this rain to catch up with that wind field. We really do very quickly. Oh, we're going to get some wildfires. Uh, we're going to get some fires that are going to break out um, ahead of the rain. That's exactly what happened. If you guys, I'm sure you folks in the mountains remember, but in Gatlinburg, I think I believe it was like the last day of November in 2016. What's wild is I was vacationing in Gatlinburg two weeks before that uh, just terrible fire that ended up getting. I mean, the, I mean, if you ever go to Gatlinburg, you can see the hills around Gatlinburg that are still the, just the trees are just it's gonna it's gonna look scarred for years before the forest recovers. But anyways, um, yeah, you guys are gonna be dealing with some strong winds, so please be prepared for this. Don't let this catch you off guard. Um, but speaking of this ice threat, as we're moving into Tuesday morning, guys, I mean, we could have the potential for some significant ice accumulations in these higher elevations of West Virginia and Virginia, and even in western sections of Maryland. And you could even start off as some very heavy, wet snow in these higher elevation regions in southern and central Pennsylvania. But this ice could linger on throughout Tuesday morning, and then eventually it will switch to rain. And this is as far out as the H4R model goes. But right through the heart of Pennsylvania, guys, we have a full-on wintry mix on going Tuesday morning. And then we got this starting to move into the northeast. So um, th th this isn't the entirety of the run yet. But if we look at the blend of all models with ice, it's liking a few one hundredths of an inch of ice, maybe as much as a, as a tenth of an inch of ice in some of these higher elevations. So I do think we're going to get some icing here in the central apps region. I definitely do. And, you know, speaking of snow, we could get some snow too, guys. I mean, maybe a dusting of snow. This could go up. We need to watch. Let's see what the National Weather Service is calling for. Not much different. So. But speaking of the rest of this system, as it moves through, uh, this is the latest GFS. All right. This kind of cruises through. You're going to get a big front end thumping of snow probably in the Adirondacks, Vermont, New Hampshire, I think. I'll say a big, but, you know, you're going to quickly change change the rain. But I think right at the beginning of this, you could get a thumping of snow. You really could before, you know, just an unfavorable placement of low pressure moves in, brings in a lot of warm air, and you inevitably switch to rain. But heavy snow right at first. This is around Tuesday evening and uh, could get be some very heavy snow in Vermont, New Hampshire, depending on where you are. Okay, and it could stay that way. There's a chance that some areas could stay all snow, especially in northern Maine. But we're getting into Wednesday about midday. Low pressure flies right over areas of southern New England. And I'm not trying to ignore you guys for the wind threat in southern New England and northeast. We'll, we'll speak on that more here tomorrow, okay, when we know a little bit more of the placement of this low. But, guys, I mean, a lot of snow could fall a day or day and a half before Thanksgiving, okay? The lake effect event is pretty much went away because the cold air – that we were thinking what's going to happen for Thanksgiving basically vanished in the mid-range. It's not even really a topic. But I'll speak on some cold air here in a second. I definitely think it could become a topic. Man, this video is going on for uh, 35 minutes long. We need to we need to wrap this up. But snowfall from this, guys, I mean, could get several inches of snow in the interior sections of New England from this system. So we'll watch out for that. Um Speaking on what's to come, guys, very interesting. This is our big system. It's affecting all of our weather right here. This is going to move on out. This moves on through. What happens after that? Okay, we could have another system that flies into the deep south, brings even more rain, okay, for Thanksgiving. We'll watch that. Maybe the deep south gets a rainy Thanksgiving. Just depends. Um, and then this rain 
kind of moves into the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Um, we could, the GFS is liking the idea of another interior snow event, maybe next weekend, okay? And then cold air drops down. And then we have to watch any energy, okay? This is starting to get into around this time. I would say this is around this time next week, so next Sunday. We have to watch any any energy flying at the, right at the base of this cold air. You see the blue lines? It's a lot of cold air dropping into the middle of the country, okay? We got to watch any energy that gets going, okay? This is a lot of cold air, all right? But it's kind of quiet. You know, we're getting into the last couple of days of November. Um, what happens? None of this is a forecast, but there's a lot of cold air, okay? A lot, there's a crazy looking storm there, but that's way off in the long range. A lot of cold air right up here. A lot of energy beginning to get going as our southern jet becomes active. Look at the euro, kind of the same thing. Okay, there goes our system flying through. There goes that potential for a Thanksgiving rain across areas of the south. Potential is there. Um, this will move into areas of the southeast next Friday. And, you know, euro shows the same thing as the GFS. Big time rainmaker sometime next weekend for the northeast. Maybe interior snow event for the northeast. And then there's that cold air dropping down. This wants to show snow in Amarillo, areas of Texas. A lot of cold air drops down, but it doesn't dive very far south. A lot of moisture south of that cold air, just kind of flirting around with it. There's a little bit of snow showing up last couple of days in November. And then here comes up right at the end of the run, a big low pressure. Looks like it's about to plow right up into this cold air, but this is about 10 days out. Okay, way too far out. What I can tell you is, I'm going to do this on the fly, okay? I can tell you is the Climate Prediction Center is is basically liking the idea of a lot of cold air in the country um, for the 25th into the 29th. Okay, so what kind of moisture are we going to be dealing with? So it's starting to get deeper into the cold season. Okay, so the good news is, well, the bad news is we're still in a drought. This was updated a few days ago. We got an exceptional drought, still pretty much dominating a ton of Mississippi and Louisiana. And uh, we still got the growing drought in the Southern Alps region. But this is the good news. This is potential for rainfall between now and December 4th, guys. Just this, this Southern jet is really, really starting to get juiced up, guys. And I really think we're about to put a massive dent. And by the time we're midway, late portion of winter, we will likely completely wipe out this drought. I really do think so. So a lot of rain is coming, guys. It's going to get to the point where you're wishing for it so much, and I think you'll probably get tired of it by the time we're about into the middle part of winter. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. If you watch this entire entire video, you're awesome. Love you so much. But um, God bless all y'all. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll talk to you in the morning.